Well, it's another day, another round of shading de shady dealings by big tech. You're watching the Fox Business Network. You won't believe these stories. A New York labor union slamming Amazon for, quote, dehumanizing and deadly work practices. Internal documents seized by Great Britain show Facebook is, had considered profiting by selling companies access to your data, including free access to the dating site Tinder. We got Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey under fire. A House committee examines whether Jack Dorsey gave misleading testimony about Twitter taking care of violent posts. Also, Twitter censored a U.S. Marine for apparently no reason. We've got Google CEO Sundra Pichai. He's set to testify at a congressional hearing next week. Google faces multi-billion dollar fines in Europe for tracking where you are even after you turn off your location on Google. It's a lot of stuff. Let's bring in attorney Hermie Dillon. She's fighting the battle against Social media censorship of conservatives. It's like tech is losing their minds, Harmi. What's going on here? Well, you know, Liz, we've heard these types of stories actually for a couple of years now. But what's amazing to me is that we haven't seen more action against these big tech companies from Washington, where uh, even though conservatives have been discriminated against, clients like my client James Damore have been fired from Google for uh, voicing conservative views. We haven't used the last two years of conservative dominance in Washington to actually open up investigations by the Federal Trade Commission, the Department of Justice, or Congress passing some regulations that would rein in these uh, massive abuses of civil rights and privacy rights uh, on the part of Americans. And we do see that happening in Europe, however. Some of the stories that you just mentioned are emanating out of Europe, where they have much more concern for privacy rights of citizens there. I'd like to see more of that in America. Yeah, we've got big tech lobbyists all over Washington, D.C. Hermine, I like your response to Republican Texas Congressman Louis Gohmert. Here's his fix for the problem with big tech. Watch. They ought to be subject to lawsuits, and I think some billion-dollar class actions uh, here and there would probably change their uh, conduct pretty dramatically. Wow, is that the fix? That was Louis Gohmert last night, Hermie, because under the law, you know this, social media is exempt from lawsuits because they supposedly offer truly diverse political discourse. What's your answer to that? Well, number one, I think that the um, Congress, which uh, uh, which Representative Gohmert sits on, has had two years to do something about it. They need to redefine and perhaps pare back the Communications Decency Act, Section 230. That would be one. But another is that a lot of these companies have arbitration clauses or limitations of liability. For example, Twitter has a $100 limitation of liability in its uh, user policy. Yeah. Some of these things make it unattractive to file lawsuits, and those are also issues that could be addressed by Congress and by regulators in Washington. You know, Hermie, it's pretty creepy that Google is tracking you after you turn off your location or pause it. They're tra potentially tracking you via other apps on Android devices. It's creepy because Google workers have been protesting Google building a censored search engine for China because China will use that search engine to track its citizens and commit human rights abuses. And now we've had news coming in. Uh, this started this talk yesterday, Harmeet that more Google workers support, support that censored search engine building it for China while they didn't help the Pentagon. What's going on there? Well, to, 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 I think to be clear, it's that they were double the number of Google employees protesting Google's work for the Pentagon than there are protesting the work in China. I'm actually impressed that any Google employees are bold enough to protest what Google is doing in China. But I think it's also convenient for them to protest what's happening somewhere else, where they don't seem to care about the welfare of their own fellow employees and what Google is doing to Americans by stealing their privacy, undermining them, censoring them, and tracking them. I think those are there's some massive hypocrisy going on there among the Google employees, yeah. or what we call dissonance. Cognitive. Yes, stay on that cognitive dissonance. I'm looking at the headline out of TechCrunch. 500 Google workers sign a letter saying, yes, Google, go ahead and build that censored search engine for China. Okay. I mean, so but, there's, yes, there, there's some against, some for. I mean, it's pretty striking what's going on there, Harmony. No, but Liz, that's 500 saying, yes, do it. 500 uh, people who have questionable moral judgment who signed that, but there are 80,000 plus Google employees. So I don't Good think point. it's fair to say that there are many of them who support it. I think most of them are probably ashamed of it, I would have to imagine. So uh, what do you think of Google going ahead with this censored search engine for China? It's, it's pretty amazing I think it's stuff. awful. 
I, I think it is awful that an American company is going to be complicit in shadowing and, and giving this data to China, which uses it to punish people. China uses data like this to prevent people from flying, to put people into camps, to prevent them from getting jobs with the government, and to track them and punish them and their relatives. It's, it's really outrageous that any American company would participate in that, but they're doing it for the, uh, for the unholy dollar, unfortunately. Do you think, uh, getting back to Facebook, do you think Facebook jumped the shark here with, in terms of its credibility? Well, again, if you look into the details, it looks like the consideration of charging for the data that is uncovered in this particular story is from 2012 to 2014, and they have come out and said that they don't currently do that. However, um, you know, follow the money. Uh, you have to understand that if you're not being charged for a product, you are the product. And I think that's also okay for Americans as long as that's all properly disclosed. And the problem is we haven't had transparency and it has not been disclosed what is being done with our data. And we also can't get it back. I don't think yeah. there's a way for you to shut off Facebook and then retrieve your data from them. That yeah, doesn't exist. And it, beyond 2012, more recently, they've been giving access to data. Certainly Cambridge Analytica was reading Facebook messages. Harmeet, you're great. Come back soon. We love having you on.